There's a new patient safety alert from the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation, ECRI, and the Institute for Safe Medication Practice. APSF, ECRI, and ISMP have received several reports recently of medication bile coring incidents. Coring occurs when a piece of the flexible stopper on a medication vial detaches during needle insertion, which may lead to contamination of the medication and the risk of injecting stopper fragments into patients. While coring has been shown to occur with any needles used to access a flexible vial stopper, the highest risk seems to be related to using blunt needles. Although coring has been known to be a problem for some time, the data supporting best practices for accessing vials is limited. APSF, ECRI, and ISMP are actively working to develop evidence-based recommendations. Based on the data available at this time, these are the interim recommendations. Consult and follow the manufacturer instructions for accessing the vial. If instructions are not provided, avoid the use of blunt needles. Use sharp needles, ideally with needle guard protection. Smaller gauge needles are preferred. Consider using 21 gauge rather than 18 gauge needles when possible. You should also only puncture the vial stopper once. Inspect the vial and syringe for macroscopic coring and if present, do not administer the medication to the patient. Contact your local pharmacy for assistance with reporting and returning affected vials to the manufacturer and report any instances of coring directly to ISMP. While no documented cases of patient harm have been reported to date, APSF, ECRI, and ISMP believe there is a potential for significant risk if these fragments are inadvertently injected into patients. These recommendations only apply to the use of needles for accessing medication vials with flexible stoppers. These guidelines are intended to be the best practices we can recommend at this time to minimize the risk of coring. More thorough investigation is planned and the results will be published as soon as possible along with any updates to the guidelines. For more information, go to APSF.org.